What's up, it's your boy Remus, and on this video, we're gonna be reviewing slash summarizing the things that I learned in this book. It's called The Evolution, you can't really see it, but Evolution of Desire by a prominent psychologist named David Buss. And it's on um, desire, meaning sexual choice and selection of our ancestors, which is the evolution part, and how that has sh shaped strategies of human mating. So he looks at human behavior in regards to like marriage, um, but on a psychological level, because it's a psychology book, but it's one that everyone can get into. Now, on this channel, I'm doing book reviews, book summaries. I'm sharing what I've learned um, because I'm on the road to mastery and anyone else who is also on that uh, road to mastery, knowledge, power, strength, inner strength, uh, this is the channel definitely for you. So let's get in and let's get into it. So I got notes here. That's what I'm reading. And I got hay fever, so you're gonna have to bear with me. Now, the sexual landscape of today's world is a result of the sexual choices that our ancestors made. The sexual choices that increased the survival of our ancestors is what has developed and defined our sexual preferences today. This is the stuff that I've learned in this book. So, for example, let's look at what women are into. Women before who chose a man hundreds of thousands of, hundreds of, thousands of years ago or whatever, if they chose a man lacking in reliability and dependability and him being there for long-term commitment to help raise the baby. If she didn't um, choose that type of guy, she would be more likely to die and so would the child. And you see that parallel with what women go for today. So he's drawing the comparison and parallel between what, um, you know, the choices were for our ancestors and the choices they made and the... Um, like the desires that we naturally have today. And a lot of people need this information because a lot of people love, they love to go on Twitter and be an expert at this stuff, but they have no clue. They have no clue about the truth um, of, our, of, of the reasons and motivations for our behavior. But everyone wants to be an expert, but this type of book would make you an expert because it's not just written for psychology students and you know those type of people. This is a book that the average person could read. You know, there's a chapter called What Women Want, What Men Want, um, Breaking Up and all of that stuff. So it's, it's very interesting, but let's continue. So we know, as I just said, women who didn't choose partners that indicated, you know, they're there for long-term commitment uh, would be more likely to die. However, there are long-term strategies that we have and you'd probably agree, but this is where people will start falling off short-term mating strategies have also developed in us and other mammals and all animals to help our reproductive success so when you don't understand why someone's cheating or having an affair and it's like people don't actually know the reason it's in this book you know the reasons why is because there was a reproductive success that the person could have attained by engaging in that behavior so you know it's been passed down now, a problem that the sexual stra strategies of each gender uh, results in is conflict because we have different sexual agendas. We have different sexual strategies. And this is a cause for <laughs> a lot of problems um, just, you know, between males and females because males and females really don't understand each other for what they are. They want to look at the other person as what, uh, what they themselves are. So one interesting fact is Humans primary mating strategy usually dress between on a scale between monogamy and polygyny, which is a form of polygamy. Polygyny being um, the form of where a, hu a husband has multiple wives. When there's a surplus of females, the society will usually be more polygynous. Whereas when uh, there's more males, the society will be more monogamous because those males would just commit uh, more to one person. So the population ratio of females to males will influence sexual choice. And as one sex makes, makes certain decisions, the other must adapt and vice versa. When one moves, the other does too. 
Now, the differences in our choices can be accounted for by studying the biology in each of each sex. So, for example, uh, men, uh, men produce sperm. But the sperm, I learned in this book, is made at a rate of 12 million an hour. 12 million an hour. That's nearly 300 million in a single day. There's an infinite supply of it. There is no menopause with men. Um, there's a lot of quantity. So it kind of reflects in what men go for, which is quantity. Women, however, you know, they pr produce the egg. There's a finite supply because one to two million over are produced at the start of the woman's life and 400 come to maturation to be released and will be released out of puberty and after that there's no more so there's um there's not as much quantity and that's that 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 reflects in women's behavior and choices because women go for quality quality way more the reason why wait before we go to that one one other difference is uh, women are going for wealth and status much more than men and men go for health and fertility indicators so that's the reason why men go for beauty it talks about beauty standards even homosexual men show this preference for going for genetic indicators physical attractiveness more than homosexual women and straight women despite the thought that um, men set beauty standards this isn't exactly true you know, men are reacting to beauty standards. We'll go into that in another video. Men are generally not biologically built for monogamy. There's an effect called the Coolidge effect, which is when you bring in, um, when, when, and they study this in all different types of males, not just the humans. When you bring the male, a new female, he will be aroused and he's still producing a lot of sperm. But when he, you br give him an older female that, say, for example, the chicken or the bull was mating with, they will lose interest because there's not really an incentive because he's already copulated. However, monogamous marriage served as a way for lower status males to engage in mate guarding, guarding their mates so they can ensure that he's getting the reproductive opportunity that the woman's offering. And this is why men are more jealous over sexual affairs as opposed to emotional affairs. And women actually will be more emo um, affected by the emotional aspect of affairs as opposed to the sexual affair. Each gender is aware of what the other wants. This is another note. Which is why they will dangle the prospect of their desire in front of the uh, potential partner in order to gain access or control. For example... Actually, we'll go into that in another video. I don't want to spoil the book too much. However, after each gender have attained each other via marriage, you can observe that satisfaction and motivation declines a lot by the fourth year. And he gives the statistics and um, the differences in complaints that the rates of complaints at the in the first year of marriage and compares them with the fourth year of marriage. It's very interesting to see. The pros of this book, it provides solid facts and observations that indicate the clear differences between each of the gender's sexual preferences and behaviours. The book uses statistics that guide you along the facts. Uh, the author also attempts to, you know, give the reasons behind those facts. There's not only a focus on humans, but a parallel between the repertoire, repertoire of human behaviours and the behaviours of other species. Um, in the animal, mammal, and primal king, primate kingdom. And for, from start to finish, it goes from evolution to current. So that's a good thing. The cons, I would say, is despite the differences through the results of different experiments, questionnaires, and observations, uh, he gives interpretations that have an aura of uncertainty. So you can tell he's not 100% sure that's the reason why but he never claimed to anyway he's just given the facts and the facts and the statistics are at least better than not knowing it so that is my review of this book I highly recommend it this is one that even if you're not into psychology you would find interest in um, I breezed through the book because I read books quite fast now so you know I, I breezed through it in a couple of days um and uh, yeah, as I said, this helps people actually understand the real context that men and women are men and women are coming from. So.
get this, let me know what you think or comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.